winding straights and smooth roads define the track. The great teams that have won here, Mercedes, Jaguar, Ford, Ferrari, Porsche, define the history. And exhaustion, elation, hope, and fear define the experience. This is the 24 Hours of Le Mans. This is the race that determines how they'll measure their year. A single day, all or nothing. Yet knowing all the while that the ultimate effort incurs the ultimate risk. But for now, all that lies ahead as the 78th running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans is next. See one of the Colas Audis in right now, making a pit stop. Oliver Jarvis climbing out. We're just over 10 hours, or just about to be at 10 hour mark here in about 19 minutes. And there has been plenty of excitement that has taken place since the drop of the green earlier today. Let's check in on the American drivers that we have here. Scott Tucker currently running 12. You know, Scott Tucker there in the, uh, in the Audi. And we were talking about dedication the Tracy Crone shows. What about Scott Tucker? He's a guy who's won the Ferrari Challenge Championship and uh, is really attacking the LMP Challenge category in the American Le Mans Series. Races Daytona prototypes in the Rolex Sports Car Series. Still runs the Ferrari Challenge and is now over here running an Audi at Le Mans yeah. for the first time. There is a guy dedicated to his motorsports, to say the least. And that's a huge step. I mean, definitely it's a, it's a whole different thing uh, from a Daytona prototype or from you know, Ferrari Challenge car, any of that. But when you're talking about, an, you know, an Audi or the top of the game here, LMP1 and the 24-hour Le Mans, you're talking big time. Uh -oh. Dale was talking about the cheese and a problem for the Colas, the number 15, Bakerud behind the wheel, off and straight in to the barrier. Is that sure, no. Indianapolis. Possibly. Indianapolis has certainly taken a toll on cars today. It looks like it. It does look like it. Driving the tractor down there has been busy. The team about to be busy as well. It's the problem for Baker Root in Indianapolis, and as we said, it has certainly taken its toll on drivers today. Sharing that car with Oliver Jarvis and Christian Albers. Back at Le Mans, Oliver Jarvis taking over the controls of the number 15, the Collis. We understand that not all of you could watch the entire thing, so let's bring you up to date. It was Peugeot one through four at the start before you had to go back and pick up any of the Audis. Unfortunately for Nigel Mansell, his Le Mans debut was pretty much over soon after it got started. Hour three, car three. Pedro Lamy, his two co-driving teammates, uh, Sebastian Bourdais and Simon Pagenaud did not even take the wheel in this race. Scoot ahead to hour five, and this is what we were just talking about with Tom Christensen. Tom Christensen, of course, trying to go around the disabled BMW, the art car with a flat left front tire. Look, he has nowhere to go. He only can go to the outside. Unfortunately, it gets him stuck there in the gravel. Going for three, the drive for three for Risi Competizione. It was brought to an abrupt halt with continual gearbox problems. And here we see some more action. Jean-Christophe Bouillon said his headlamps had failed as he came down in the four chicanes. They're on right now, however. His day was done. Massive shunt to the Rebellion team. And then in the morning hours, major drama for the race leading car, Frank Montagny and Olivier Canal thought his day was done. It was certainly over for, Mo for Montagny and his co-drivers, but Peugeot was not done just yet. They were not. Look at Anthony Davidson. He had the hammer down. He was in kill mode. He was doing whatever it took to try and get the lead back with that number one car that had some problems. And then go going through the field, this happened, Dorsey. Well, ringing the neck on his own car, he wrung the neck of the Corvette as well, pushing it wide into the dirty area. These guys worked frantically, did get the car back out on the racetrack, but an engine failure sidelined that effort. That was the GT2 class leading car, and it got back out. It circulated maybe a handful of times only to come up short with an engine problem, just like the last remaining Peugeot Sport entry with Alex Wirtz, the defending race winner behind the wheel. Peugeot's last roll of the dice was with Team Orica and Loic Duval, but a third engine problem for those Peugeot 908s left Team Principal Hugh de Schonac in disbelief. Well, we are level with the overall largest amount of laps run. However, as far as pure mileage, this is a Le Mans record as far as distance traveled in the history of this Amazing event.
And isn't that something to put to bed for Timo Bernard, Mike Rockefeller, and Romain Dumas? They're part of something very, very special. We'll see new cars from Audi and from Peugeot next year. The fight will continue. Yeah, this is essentially the fastest Le Mans race ever. And you'd have to think with the new technology, have they pegged them back enough? What will the engineers come up with in terms of the power plants to achieve the same sort of lap times as we're seeing this year? This has been an incredible pace. Maybe the pace was so hard, that was what broke the Peugeots. Hard to say. Maybe it was just a component failure, the same one. But there we see Timo Bernard. Don't wave too early, mate. I've seen <laughs> Nigel Mansell do that, and uh, the car conk out. Oh. Well, everybody looks to Formula One as the premier category in world motorsport for the leading edge of technology. Don't turn your nose up at this either. This is world leading stuff in diesel technology and in sports car and endurance technology to push your car to the limit sprint style for 24 hours and be the survivor. Not only be the, the winning survivor, but how about one, two, three for the four circles, for the four rings. And I believe that coming to Le Mans for a manufacturer, this is where you learn how to develop technologies for streetcars, more so than Formula, a lot more so than Formula One. A lot of the technologies that Audi's learned here, reliability, efficiency, they've adapted in their streetcars, and here we come, sneaking up on the run to the checkered flag right now. And remember, that was the statement made earlier this week, Audi brings a plus in efficiency to Le Mans. I'll tell you what, the emotion is really going to kick in for Romar Dumas, Mike Rockefeller. They have had so much success in their relatively young careers, but Le Mans is special. And I tell you what, when their teammate crosses their line, it is going to kick in big time. Remember, Rocky, Mike Rockefeller joins the greats of Al Holbert, Hurley Hayward, Derek Bell, and Jan Lammers in winning the Rolex 24 at Daytona and the 24 hours of Le Mans in the same year. And that's an incredible achievement, winning Daytona and winning Le Mans, but doing it in the same year. Wow. What They're all poised. And Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich can breathe the most massive sigh of relief. The pressure that was put on that man's shoulders politically, internally at Audi to deliver was immense. And that was a word that the eight-time winner Tom Christensen used, and it's an appropriate adjective. The boys from the eight, Trellier, and uh, Andre Lotter and Marcel Fessler, they will get to stand on the podium as well. And so to Dindo, Tom and Alan. But the glory and the victory belongs to car number nine. The traditional flag waving from the corner marshals who have been there every moment of this race and all week long <laughs> from Wednesday onwards. A year ago, it was the lion that roared. Audi has owned this place for the last decade. This now marks nine wins in 11 years. Audi were pushed back down the stairs last year by Peugeot, but they are back. Audi back to where they belong at Le Mans. One, two, and three. A whitewash at Le Sarth. And what about this for three super guys, super talented drivers, Rockefeller, Dumas, and Timo Bernard. It's been incredible. And this is where it gets wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>